the prayers of Queen Kunti. Kunti spoke, I bow to you, the source of all the person who's original. O Lord, controller, absolute beyond the substance of this world, you're close to me and yet I see. Kunti is amazed at how Krishna has once again saved her family from a dangerous situation. And see, she sees Krishna for much more than how he is apparently just her nephew. In this verse, Kunti presents higher and higher truths which are contained in Krishna and harmonized by his unlimited power. He is a man, the self, a god, the super self, the abstract absolute, and the supreme personality of Godhead. In this way, she quickly moves from the apparent identity of Krishna as just a man to the highest conception of personal divinity. Although this is all condensed, the spiritual master Vishwanath expands this verse into a playful dialogue where Kunti tries to pray to Krishna, while Krishna objects, claiming to be much less than he truly is. Thus he tests Kunti. Others, however, may not pass the test of Krishna, if they miss these truths, the Sanskrit word alaksham means that which is not perceived or targeted. For example, in the Mundaka Upanishad, it is said, Brahmata laksham uchate. The chant is the bow, the soul is the arrow, and the supreme is the target. The suggested meaning of Kunti is that unless one knows about Krishna and how he includes and surpasses everything as the supreme personality of Godhead, then one will not target him as the goal of life. Your powerful illusion drapes a curtain to conceal you, and you are Perception, mind, or words. So losers misconstrue or fail appreciation of your play. It's skillful actors dialogue, yet some get lost in imagery because of. In these verses, and uh, okay, I got this, I got this. In these verses, Kunti sets a respectful distance between her and Krishna by elaborating on how he is invisible. This connection is shown by how the word alaksham appears again as nalakshase. Kunti says that Krishna is invisible in the sense that he is not seen by the unqualified. The sense or feeling of impossibility is not discouragement, but rather it is to maximize the distance between the servant and the master. The higher above that Krishna is, the more that Kunti gets to praise him. And so let there be obstacles on all sides. There are obstacles on three sides in the journey to God. On one side, everyone is born in ignorance, and it is rare that anyone comes out of it beyond acquiring worldly knowledge, which is actually just another kind of ignorance. 
material knowledge comes from the eyes and the other senses, as well as the combination of letters between A and Z into words, sentences, and ideas. Such knowledge cannot reach Krishna unless informed by revelation. Thus his name is Adhokshajam. On another side, the material energy of Krishna presents illusions which filter out the unqualified from reaching him, as a curtain blocks the vision of the audience, but the actors can see from behind it. So similarly, the curtain of illusion, the curtain of illusion blocks the vision of embodied beings, but not Krishna. As people become lost in a play or a movie, so people become lost in the imagery of the world. This distracts them from the significant dialogues about Krishna. And thirdly, on Krishna's side, he is completely unobliged and thus can choose whether or not to reveal himself. Thus there are obstacles on all sides, from oneself, from nature, and from the Lord. Kunti compares herself to the kind of people who are qualified to overcome these impossible obstacles from oneself, nature, and the Lord. She does not consider herself to be like them. Surely, they are pure, sagacious, learned souls who engage in regulated devotional service to Krishna according to the regulations of scripture, Vidhana. This means that although Krishna is beyond perception, mind, or words, the scriptures and the devotees are evidence that it is possible to know him. In the Taitariya Upanishad 241, it is said, That from which words returned, along with the mind, unsuccessful in attaining it, a person who knows that unlimited one never fears. Logically speaking, there is no sense in describing that which cannot be understood. Therefore, descriptions of the ways in which it is impossible to know God implies that it is indeed possible to know Him. Similarly, prayers to God about how one is unworthy before Him imply that one can become worthy. Otherwise, there is no reason to pray at all. Kunti cleverly claims to be disqualified in order to appeal for Krishna's special mercy. And all of the obstacles that she describes actually enhance the experience of seeing him. Because of this, my only hope is praising your sweet names and deeds, O Krishna. marks which leave your feet with lotus marks i keep messing this thing up am i supposed to start over here i don't know by her humility and his mercy kunti excels the vedas in describing the absolute truth he is krishna the all attractive and because he is all attractive he delights his parents and all people thus his essential nature is to attract the heart of his devotee in the Taittiriya Upanishad 2.7.1, it is said that he is certainly tasty, and one who attains this taste becomes blissful. 
In this verse, Kunti blissfully describes Krishna according to her own taste of parental love and with veneration. There are many words for lotus in Sanskrit, and this shows the ornamental poeticism of the language. Krishna is praised in the choicest verses and compared to lotuses in many ways. The beauty and power of nature stems from Krishna, and they are samples of his excellence. In fact, the whole universe stems from the lotus in the navel of the Lord. The lotus represents the cosmic power of Krishna, and he has not just one flower, but a whole garland of them. And thus his power is unlimited. His eyes are beautifully shaped like the petals of a lotus, and his glances are as cooling as the sight of lotuses. The soles of his feet have many symbols on them like the lotus which leave auspicious marks wherever he walks. And as the lotus flower grows from the mud and yet is untouched, graceful, and pure, so Krishna's feet never touch matter. Rather, he transforms and purifies everything into spirit by contact. He purifies his devotees in the earth with the cool glance of his lotus eyes and the impressive touch of his lotus feet. Ordinarily, it is etiquette to begin seeing or describing Krishna from the feet up to the face, but Kunti begins from the belly, then to the garland, down to the feet, and then up to the eyes. And this is a hint of her parental, parental affection with reverence. In the next five verses, Kunti recounts difficult events and how, from her life and how she processed them in Krishna consciousness. Teachings of Queen Kunti Kijai. I don't know what I was doing there, but okay. Hi, Bolo.